Magmula sa araw na ito, sumpa kong matintiman, lahat ka sa aking buhay, hindi kita pababayaan. Ikaw lang ang mamahalin, hindi kita pababayaan. Maging anuman ang iyong pasya, ako'y nakaalalay. Kasama mo ako sa hapis o saya, sa hirap o kasagana. Maging 
pasya. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Ngayong hapon ay uumpisahan na natin ang mga formal na workshop session na sisimulan ng, ng isang craft lecture. Ang craft lecture ay healing ng UPICW mula sa mga tampok na panelista 
upang makapagbahagi sila ng kanilang karanasan at kaalaman sa mga tiyak na paksang may kaugnayan sa taunang tema ng palihan. Panoorin natin ang From Poetry to Puppetry ni Dr. Amihan Bonifacio Ramolete. Good afternoon. Allow me to share with you my lecture entitled From Poetry to Puppetry. Poetry and puppetry are both means of expression. They can express a thought, tell a story, and evoke an emotion. There is an interplay of words and rhythm. Poetry does it through words, while puppetry does it through inanimate objects. What is a puppet? A puppet is any inanimate object manipulated by an individual or a puppeteer in front of an audience. But how does one make the inanimate animate? Allow me to give you a brief background on Teatro Mulat's style of puppetry before I share with you my process in creating the performance Sa Ugoy ng Duyan. National artist Amelia La Peña Bonifacio founded Teatro Mulat ng Pilipinas in 1977. She chose the word mulat, which means to open the eyes or to awaken. Hence, a theater to awaken the Filipino children to the beauty of Philippine and Asian culture and heritage. Since there is no long tradition of puppetry in the Philippines, Professor La Peña Bonifacio was inspired by the Japanese bunraku and the Indonesian wayang kulit or shadow puppet and wayang golek or rod puppet. The Indonesian puppeteer or the dalang is a total performer. He serves as the puppeteer and narrator, gives voice to all the characters and leads the gamelan ensemble. He can also make his own puppets. The Japanese bunraku is manipulated by three puppeteers. The first one for the head and right hand, known as the master puppeteer. The second one for the left hand and to assist with the props. And the third one for the feet. They wear black, including a face cover, to signify invisibility. However, the master puppeteer's face is seen by the audience and should be devoid of any expression. It takes 10 years for a puppeteer to master the feet, another 10 years for the left hand, and another 10 years to train for the head and the right hand. Seeing the puppeteers may be distracting at first, but as the show progresses, you eventually focus on the puppet because of the skillfulness of the puppeteers. This is the idea of the puppet and puppeteer moving as one. The puppeteer breathes life and transfers his or her soul to the puppet or what we in Mulat would like to call Salin Kaluluwa. For the performance Sa Ugoy ng Duyan, I use the string puppet, also known as a marionette. It was a gift from a Japanese puppeteer. The puppet is very simple with a round head, hands and feet made from wooden balls and its body from a piece of cloth. The puppet is attached to a T-bar with only five strings to move the puppet. Sa pundong ito, hayain ninyong ibahagi ko ang aking naging proseso sa pagbuo ng pagtatanghal ng awiting sa ugoy ng duyan. Titik ni Levi Celerio at musika ni Lucio San Pedro. Sa paghahanda para sa pagtatanghal ay mahalaga ang pagpili ng material. Dahil may okasyon o tiyak na layunin ng pagtatanghal, ay mahalagang maging makahulugan at makabuluhan ang material na mapipili. Ang partikular na pagtatanghal na ito ay para sa programang Kwentong Mulat, isang pagpupugay kay Lola Amel na ginawa bilang pagunita sa kanyang ikaapat na pung araw ng paglisan sa mundong ito. 
Dati ko na itong itinatanghal, subalit kakaiba at espesyal ang paghahanda para dito dahil bukod sa pagbibigay pugay sa isang pambansang alagad ng sining, ina ng papetri at teatrong mulat, ay ina ko rin siya. Halo-halong emosyon ang naramdaman ko noong panahong iyon. Pero gaya nga ng sinasabi sa teatro, the show must go on. Ano man ang nararamdaman mo, may sakit o problema ka man. Kaya makailang ulit akong nag-inhale, exhale, bago magsimula ang shoot. Sa pagtatanghal na ito ay makikita ang interaksyon ng titik, musika, galaw, puppet at puppeteer. Tulad ng pag-arte, hindi binibigyang kilos o aksyon ang bawat salita. Pinipili lamang ang mahahalagang salita at iyon ang binibigyang diin. Madarama sa paggalaw ng puppet at saliw ng musika ang mga emosyong nais nitong ipahiwatig. May pagkakataong naiiba ang kilos ko at ng puppet mula sa nakagawian, dalang na rin marahil ng matinding emosyon. Silipin natin kung paano isinalin sa pagtatanghal ang titik ng sa uboy ng duyan. Makikita natin ang puppeteer hiwalay sa puppet na walang buhay. Sa unsaknong, sa pag-abot at paghawak sa puppet, ay saka pa lamang ito nabibigyang buhay. Makikita natin dito ang pagsilang ng anak at ang paghehele sa kanya. Ang papet ang anak at ang papitir ang kanyang ina. Sa ikalawang saknong, mula sa pagiging sanggol, ay makikita ang paglaki ng anak. Inaalalayan siya upang matutong maglakad. Sa paglaki ng anak ay natututo siyang magpakita ng pasasalamat at paggalang. At sa dulo ng saknong ay makikita natin ang anak na ipinaghehele ng kanyang ina. Sa ikatlong saknong, patuloy ang paglaki ng anak. Pabilis ng pabilis ang kanyang paglalakad at paglibot sa mundo. Subalit sa dulo, ay minanais pa rin niyang balikan ang paghehele sa kanya sa duyan. Sa ikaapat na saknong, sa paglaki at pagtanda, ay patuloy ang kanyang paglipad upang maabot ang kanyang mga pangarap. Mas madalas na rin siyang nalalayo sa kanyang ina kung kaya't nais pa rin niyang balikan ang pagmamahal na kanyang nadarama sa piling ni nanay at sa paghehele sa kanya sa duyan. Sa ikalimang saknong, patuloy ang anak sa paglalayag sa mundo. Subalit, anuman ang mga hamong kinakaharap ay nariyan pa rin si nanay na gumagabay. Sa huling linya ng saknong 
ay magiging isa ang puppet at ang puppeteer. Pareho nilang naaalala at nadarama ang sakit at tighati. Si kaanim na saknong ay ipinakikita ang pagpupugay ng puppet at puppeteer sa ina ng puppetry at ina ng teatrong mulat. Ang pag-aalay ng puppet sa manlilikha at ang pagpupugay ng anak sa kanyang ina. Kung mapapansin ninyo, may mga kilos na inuulit-ulit tulad ng paghehele sa anak at ang paikot na galaw ng puppet at puppeteer sa entablado. May dalawang paraan ng paghehele. Yung una ay karga ng ina ang anak at yung ikalawa ay nakapatong sa braso ng ina ang anak. Ang paikot na galaw ay sumisimbolo sa ikot ng buhay na kahit lumaki at tumanda na ang anak ay nais niya pa balikan ang alaala ng kanyang pagkabata kapiling ang ina. Sa paulit-ulit na kilos at galaw ay higit na nabibigyang diin ang mensahe ng awit at mga titi. Nagbabago rin ang katauhan ng puppeteer mula sa pagiging ina ng puppet sa unang apat na bahagi at ang pagiging anak na rin sa dulo nito. Sa pagtatanghal na ito, hindi lamang ang puppet ang nagkukwento, kundi maging ang puppeteer. Kung babalikan ko ang prosesong pinagdaanan sa pagsasali ng titik sa pagtatanghal, nasasabi kong mahalagang una, suriin ang mensahe ng akda. Ikalawa, humanap ng inspirasyon kung paano ito mabibigyang buhay. At ikatlo, bigyang kulay ang pagtatanghal, maaring gamit ang sarili o iba pa mang pamamaraan. Kung hahanap ako ng isang salita na maglalarawan sa proseso ko ng pagsasali ng titik sa pagtatanghal, ito ay hashtag hugot. Maraming salamat at isang malikhaing araw sa inyong lahat. Maging anuman ang iyong pasya. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Ami, para sa napakagandang pambungad na panayam. Aasahan natin ang iba pang mga mayamang bahaginan mula sa inyo at sa iba pang mga panelista sa mga susunod na araw. Ngayon po ay tinatawagan natin muli si Dr. Amihan Bonifacio Ramolete upang ipakilala ang ating unang workshop fellow at para umpisahan ng ating first workshop session. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong maging bahagi ng ALBWW. Our first session will feature Christian Ryan Ram Mali. In describing his creative process, Ram says, and I quote, Staring blankly at things helped me write, believe it or not. It's not wandering so much as it is grounding myself in the present and my current dispositions about things I may choose to write about. The thing I like to stare at the most is my pink lampshade. End of quote. Let's see what came out of the staring process. Ram will perform his poems, Soft Boy Dilemmas and The Longest Ride. Break a leg, Ram. Hindi kita pababayaan Hey, Ram here. So uh, the first piece uh, is called Soft Boy Dilemmas. Here goes. When I was younger, 
the air would postpone its violence as I walked in the hallway. An abrupt pause, tangible as how a stare can hold a body captive in its own waters. The eyes know how to paralyze how to unclothe without touching a pinch of skin nakedness swallowed me whenever the boys in class noticed my softness told me it's out of place that it didn't belong in body parts that required the attention of violence so they looked at me. The sweet relationship I had with gravity, the way I turned the lights on, how I sat on chairs, the intricacies I worked with to speak, to walk, to show people that I existed and they wondered why I was so soft. The word bading was a whip. Let me tell you how that word rendered the air still, how I couldn't breathe, but felt its texture on my throat, the way the temperature plummeted and landed ungraciously on my nervous skin. That word was uncomfortable skin. I kept peeling off, but never got to the bone. That word was a discreet command my muscles adhered to. And each night I prayed to be a little stiffer. I performed a prayer, an exorcism, crying and taking fistfuls of air, punching the soft flesh of pillows because strength measured by force allegedly made a man more effective. And I was apparently out of practice. <laughs> if I were to count the number of times I stared at the mirror only to find the person I hate, I will remember the day I tried to bury him on New Year's Eve. With a vow, it was the day my softness will take its last breath in the form of a squeal or a dance or a walk. I remember walking with it to the market, the air postponing its violence, the slippery sound of meat, scales, puddles, knives on wood, all suspended with a knowing that I was there, a boy so soft. He destroyed what it meant to be one. But this softness, this affair my body had with gravity clung to me the following year. Flamboyant accidents, little breaks in the masculine character whenever I turned the lights on, the way I sat on chairs pretending was like holding your breath. The air will always find its way back to you when I came out of gay. It was like finally being able to exhale. It was learning that masculinity was as stable as a rock falling from a cliff when it breaks. It only knows how to scatter, but I know how to collect. Know the brevity of each passing sorrows every time the boys in the neighborhood or in class couldn't solve a problem with their fists. So they turned to me, sun-kissed and pissed at the sight of me. I would collect myself from their trembling palms, kiss their knuckles, forgave them for a man with all of his obsessions is a victim of his own hardness. Look at me. <laughs> Look at how soft and slithery and feminine I still am even after years of them poking me until I shattered but I never did Ikaw lang ang mamahalin hindi kita baba Uh, the second piece uh, is called The Longest Ride. Here goes. But wait long.
There needs to be at least one part of me in motion. It can be a craning of my neck, a licking of lips, a leg bumping up and down, a fiddling of strings, my limbs spasm in agony on rest. Mom is fond to recall my time in the room, says my kicking roused her from slumber, says I kept switching positions so they had to cut her open like more open than she had been in her marriage. In the open streets, lampposts, scaffolding, steel poles, other people made an enemy out of me. They're the obstructions preventing my limbs to reach their highest potential with space. Watch as these untrained muscles grapple, writhe, and churn for sensations no earth can provide. But once in a cramped UV, my shoulders sank dragging my neck at invitation to a bound to be interrupted rest i was sure even then there was at least one part of me that was moving but none of it mattered the second the second i felt a hand maneuver its way to the crack of my thigh then all the habits went Still, suddenly, there were no movements available. Not a crack or snap. He was a builder, my crotch, an urgent project. He molded in haste, and I just sat there as he built a ruin out of me, I swear. I willed this body to collapse upon him, to let the hollow blocks of this desecrated architecture to thrash in its grip to crush the veins in his busy hand, but nothing happened. Why did this body rest when it had every right to dance for its life, to extend itself, to tap, to hamper the molding, to flutter away, to command every single nerve to jump and alert the pain receptors to feel that I was in deep, deep pain. The only help I could give myself was the reminder that the ride would only last for an hour more. Maybe if my biology knew what sexual assault was, my dick could have been a dagger. In the unlikely tragedy where desire will find your body first, I wish your body enough habits to lash out of control, to evolve beyond the offender's surprise. Let him know that you are not just limbs for his orgasm. Show him that you can be anger, movement, teeth, elbows, fists. Show him. Show him how dangerous your protest can be. Sumpah kong matintiman Ikaw lang ang mamahalin Hindi kita pababa Maraming salamat, Christian. Upang simulan ang paghimay <clears throat> sa piyesa at pagpatanghal ni Ginoong Ram Mali, pinatawagan po namin muli si Ma'am Ami kasama ang ating first reactor na si Hana Lesenia. Uh, maraming salamat at pagbati kay Ram sa kanyang pagtatanghal ng Soft Boy Dilemas at The Longest Ride. Ang bigat at uh, ako nadarama ko yung uh, sakit at sakit. Mahirap ibahagi ang uh, ganitong mga pinagdaraanan, subalit um, kailangan itong maipaalam sa mga tao upang maunawaan nila na kung ano man ang ginagawa ng ibang tao sa, o ang pagtingin ng ibang tao sa um, LGBTQ plus community. Uh, Siguro ang, ang session ito ay uh, mahalaga dahil dito natin ibabahagi kung ano yung pagtingin natin sa nilikhang pagtatanghal. Um, nais ko kayong bigyang pugay dahil bukod sa 
nagtatanghal kayo ay kayo rin ang sumusulat ng inyong uh, itinatanghal. Uh, siguro magandang tingnan natin uh, yung punto na ano ba ang intensyon ng pagtatanghal para kanino ba ito at paano ito umuugnay sa lumikha ng tula at ng pagtatanghal. Siguro unahin muna nating pakinggan si Hana Lesenya para sa kanyang mga reaksyon. Um, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Maraming salamat po. Naririnig po ba ako? Okay, so, Naririnig. Uh, thank you po, ma'am. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to commend the author of this piece because I personally think that this piece is beautifully and painfully written at the same time. Kasi yung, uh, yung pyesa ni Ram, una nung mabasa ko po ito sa manuscript, ang sabi ko, it can stand alone kahit hindi perform ng, ng, ng performer kasi ang ganda, ang bigat. Ang sabi nga ng soft boy dilemmas, ito yung poem niya eh. Pero for me, ang astig, ang tigas. Pinapakita sa akin na hindi lahat ng, hindi lahat ng matigas ay matibay at hindi lahat ng matibay ay matatag at hindi lahat ng matatag ay matapang. At pinakita ni Ram ang katapangan sa, sa tulang ito. Uh, sa tingin ko po, ito yung dapat nating talakayin. Ito yung mga tulang ito, naririto yung spoken word bilang platform upang talakayin natin ang mga isyong ito sa lipunan na patuloy na nararanasan natin ng ating kapwa, ng ating pamilya, ng ibang at ibang tao sa ating paligid. Uh, tum tumutulong at uh, tumutilig sa o uh, tumatalakay po ito tungkol sa diskriminasyon, pambubuli o pambabastos sa ibang mga tao sa uh, sabihin natin na hindi tipikal na yun nga ang sinasabi ng piyasa ni Ram, hindi tipikal na na lalaki, hindi masculine, hindi eh, lahat ng, ng hindi. So parang uh, ting, uh, tingutulig sa, tinatanong, kinakwestiyon ng piyasang ito, yung pamantayan ng lipunan, sa oo, sa hindi, sa tama o sa mali, sa kung ano yung tanggap at hindi. At ang ganda ng tula kasi it takes a brave heart to perform this one. Um, hindi namang yung second piece naman ni Ram na longest, The Longest Ride, it talks about harassment, trauma na nararanasan ng, ng tao. At talaga namang nakikita natin dito na matapang ang persona ng tula na talakayin ang mga isyu nito, na dapat naman talagang talakayin sa loob man o labas na akademya, sa paralan, at sa ating lipunan, ginag sa lipunan natin ginagalawan. Ang nagustuhan ko yung, yung tula ni Ram, sabi nga nila, may narinig lang po ako, siguro nabasa ko po, na ang tulang maganda, ang tulang totoo, gaano man kapangit, gaano man kasaklap, kahirap, kasalimuot, at kakomplikado ang mga katotohanan ito. Maganda ang tulang nagsasabi ng totoo, gaano man ano ang uri o klase ng katotohanan mayroon ng isang tula? Um, when it comes to performance, nung nakita ko si Ram, kasi ang una kong tinitinan yung nararamdaman ko sa tula, nung una kong makita si Ram na nag-perform, um, una nalungkot ako doon sa poem nung binasa ko, pero nung nakita ko siyang nag-perform, ang galing, yung, yung pitik ng kamay, yung, yung shadow sa kanyang video, yung facial expression, yung kanyang yung kanyang pagbikas, yung kanyang diin, emphasis sa kanyang sinasabi, nandun eh, istilo yun ni Ram. Actually, this is my first time na mapanood po si Ram na nag-perform at humanga po talaga ako sa kanya. At sa tingin ko, nagtagumpay po ang manunulat o nagtagumpay po ang performer doon sa minsahe na nais niyang ipabati. Na, wow, this piece lumalaban. Ah, nasa huling, ano po, nasa huling, uh, and I quote, nasa huling pong, uh, huling, um, huling, uh, huling linya. Sabi niyo, ah, uh, Show him how dangerous your protest can be. At sabi niya dito, sa huli namang linya, sa, uh, sa unang tula, Until I shattered, but I never did. At ito yung gusto natin na tula. Personally, gusto ko marinig ang tulang ito. Yung tulang lumalaban kasi nandun yung pag-asa. Ito yung persona na, yun na nakita ko si Ram, ang bigat ng tula pero nadala niya. Alam mo yung, yung lalaban ka kasi ikaw to eh. Kahit anong mang trauma ang maranasan mo, kahit anong pambubuli, o ano man ang sabihin ng iba na pangusga, lalaban ka. Ito yung tula talaga na gusto na nating mapakinggan. Yung lumalaban kasi nandun yung pag-asa kapag lumalaban yung tula. Um, doon lang naman sa piece, um, 
syempre dahil spoken word, mahalaga na naiintindihan ng mga tao dahil pinaperform pa natin is communal, pinaperform natin sa maraming tao, sa coffee shop, sa resto bar, sa mga paaralan. Naabot ba ng, ng mga makikinig, tagapanood o mambabasa ang puso natin? Sa so, tingin ko naabot, dahil naabot ako ni Ram virtually, naabot niya ako ng kanyang performance. At sa so, tingin ko, agree po yung mga nanunod po sa atin na naabot din po sila ni Ram. Uh, may tanong lang, mang, tanong na ako konti doon sa, sa second part na yung The Longest Ride. Um, um, bakit siya tinawag, bakit niya yung tinawag na ride? Di ba parang gusto mo pang ano eh, gusto mo pang maintindihan doon sa pyesa. Bakit mo tinawag na ride? yung bagay na yun. Why is it it's long called longest ride? Ano pa yung yung gustong sabihin? Yun lang. Pero in totality, ang ganda po talaga. I'm a fan of Ram Mali. So, so yun lang po muna. So, peace plus um, performance. Boom, bonga, the sounds of poetry is there, the peace and the sun kiss is everything. Ang ganda po talaga. Yun lamang po. Marami pong salamat. Maraming salamat, Hana. Uh, gusto mo bang sagutin, Ram, yung tanong ni Hana? Ah, sure po. Uh, thank you po ulit uh, muna sa, ano, sa comments nyo. I really, really appreciate na uh, my thesis came through and it, it was understood. Uh, kasi I think yun yung uh, biggest apprehension ng mga artists, you know, to be understood for what they're doing. Uh, then naman po sa question na why the longest ride, uh, uh, when it happened, uh, I was taking a UV, uh, a UV ride home. So that's, that was technically it. And it felt like literally the longest ride of my life. And uh, at this point, I want to say that whenever I, uh, whenever I make the intention of uh, performing spoken word, it is always to uh, uh, sort of create uh, a statement of power or uh, control. Because uh, while uh, most of those experiences were happening, I barely had control to begin with. So this is me kind of like uh, reclaiming them, reclaiming those experiences as my own, since they are my own. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, sige, si Edbert ay may tanong or comment? Uh, hello po, mapagpalayang hapon. Uh, actually, may comment ako sa mga tula ni Ram as a uh, cool. Una sa lahat, uh, gusto kong tutulan yung sinabi ni Ram dun sa kanyang uh, creative uh, writing process. Sinabi niya, I find my prose hideous so you can imagine how deep my frown is while I'm writing this. Uh, gusto kong tutulan yun kasi una, uh, kapag binabasa ko yung kanyang Uh, tula dito. Kasi kanina, ano, habang tinatanghal niya, sinasabihin ko rin ng pagbasa. Actually, ang pagkakasulat niya is uh, prosaic, eh. uh, jumbled. Pwede mo siyang isulat lang kahit, uh, pwede natin siyang basahin kahit uh, wala yung mga line breaks niya. At maganda kahit ganun ang gawin niyang estilo. Kaya hindi ako nag-agree na pangat siya magsulat ng prose. Hence, uh, Magaling siya magsulat uh, in overall uh, para sa akin uh, dito sa mga nabasa ko mula sa kanya ngayon. Uh, isa pang dagdag na comment ay uh, may iksing comment lang regarding sa pagtatanghal at sa pagsusulat. Um, una, di ba, ang binanggit ko na ay nagandahan ako sa sulat mismo nung binabasa ko siya. Nakadagdag yung kanyang pagtatanghal dun sa ganda. Uh, yung Da, uh, yung, magpampag, yung pagpapaganda na yun ay pinatutunayan na mas magandang medium talaga ang pagtatanghal kaysa sa pagsusulat lamang kasi sa totoo lang, bibihira na lang talaga yung mga nagbabasa ngayon. At yung mga nagbabasa yun, kadalasan meron lang sinusundan na babasahin. At hindi tayo tiyak kung sino ang mga yun, sino madalas ang kanilang sinusundan. Kaya magandang outlet talaga ang pagtatanghal, lalo na sa mga ganitong klaseng uh, akda na may tinatalakay na issue, na, may, na sabi nga may gustong patunayan, may sinasabi. All in all, uh, gusto ko lang talagang i-commend ang makata na si Ram dahil sa performance at sa likhang sining niya na ito. Ayun lang po. Maraming salamat, Edward. 
Uh, meron pa po bang ibang uh, tanong or komento mula sa ating uh, fellows or panelists? Sige, habang nag-iisip pa sila ako, may tanong ako kay Ram. So, anong nararamdaman mo habang tinatanghal mo yung iyong tula? Um, I think it's rage po, pero more of like, hindi yung isang bagsaka na rage. Uh, it works in degrees. There's mm -hmm. rage na parang seductive. Kasi I think that's <laughs> kind of like uh, my <laughs> my style, I guess, in performing. I like to be malande. Mm -hmm. on stage. And I want to uh, contrast that rage with that malandi persona. To make, I think to make it more, yeah, vengeful and sexy at the same time. Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, and um, I guess at the end of uh, each performance, uh, I think I get sad. Uh, I, I sometimes, especially uh, if the if the pieces were uh, particularly something that is close that is close to me, yeah, especially uh, those two. Because, like I said, in the creative process, ko, there are some things that I wish na hindi ko na dapat sinulat, na they mm -hmm. weren't the materials I had to work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. This version is a little different from the video that you submitted. And um, there's a very big difference in terms of your use of gestures. You move very gracefully. Yun na nga, sexy and vengeful. So, iba, mas, mas lumabas siya dito sa um, updated video compared to the first one. So, maganda siya. Um, dahil very graphic yung text, Baka meron lang ibang sections na mas ma-visualize namin. So, to, to add on to the struggles, mabigat na siya actually, pero to emphasize a point, baka magandang, merong particular section na talagang may kita mo yung struggle. I don't know in what way, but... Uh, that's a, just a suggestion. Um, and it's nice because you're very clear with your delivery. So, yun pa lang, pag naiintindihan mo yung sinasabi, ang sarap ng pakinggan. Tapos, iba na yung hinahanap mong images. So, yun na nga, yung facial expression, yung gestures, yung body movement. Ang hirap lang sa Zoom kasi naka-landscape. <laughs> Gusto ko Actually, sana portrait para makita mo yung buong katawan eh. Kasi meron kang reference to kay. the legs. Uh -huh. yeah, yun nga po yung issue kay. Um, one of my problems po uh, with, uh, with the virtual setup is it can't encapsulate my movements. Like kasi, minsan kasi my body moves on its own and sometimes i have movements na hindi nakikita ng screen and, you know, so yun yung kailangan mong i discover you have to play around with your camera <laughs> Apo, yeah, exactly. to to get it kasi ano eh madaming nami miss out although as it is meron na you feel it you you get the idea pero iba pa rin yung syempre merong added visual um image so, important nga yun, yung clarity in uh, delivery. Tapos, ma na nakikita mo yung pacing, nag-iiba, di ba? So, there's the rhythm na mabilis, tumataas, and then bumababa, tumatahimik. Um, there's stage presence. Gusto ko actually yung pinakikita mo rin yung process mo before getting into the poem. So, yung Apo, yeah. tagal, sabi ko, hala, naghang ba siya? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hindi ba lang nag-internalize? <laughs> Usually po uh, pre-quarantine uh, when I was when I was still performing sa mga stages. Tatalikod ako dapat kasi okay. I, I, I had to internalize pero since again kayo dito kasi yung awkward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. suicide na lang. Yeah. Mhm. Eh pre-performance. Okay, pre-performance okay, pre rituals. Okay. Um any other questions? Sahe inspiration. Ano yung So pag tinatanghal mo siya, uh, iniisip mo pa ba at what point ito yung movement ko? Uh, flow 
fluid ba yung yung performance or merong sections na meron ka ng um, um, there are there are sections po na definitely planned pero as much as possible I want it to be flowy and mm-hmm. malande siguro there are siguro mga three to four sections na kailangan may gesture is example po in sa uh, soft boy dilemmas yung they wondered why I was so soft that was planned pero like one of the things that I planned beforehand but there are some movements po na it just happens and I just go with it mm-hmm. and uh, ano lang po a response lang po dun sa ano dun sa comment po ni Edward earlier uh, I think uh, so lang sabihin na iba po kasi yung pag-atake ko sa spoken word and sa page poetry. So kapag mm-hmm. spoken word po talaga, um, my language tends to be really prosaic. And actually, um, I don't rely much on uh, I don't rely much on uh, the enjambment. Because mm-hmm. I believe na one of the purpose why we cut our lines is para may guide readers on how to read uh, the poem. Pero kapag spoken word the artist kind of like becomes uh, the page. So, ako yung magde-decide kung ano yung intonation, my voice inflections, the movements, and all. Okay, thank you. Um, let's have Ma'am Banawe. Ang magandang hapon and congratulations, Nora. Uh, curious lang ako actually itong question na to, ano din eh. Uh, kaya kung tanungin bukas, sa sumab magiging session bukas. Pero for now, ano yung, uh, what goes through your body or what went through your body in terms of healing nung finally nasulat mo ito and what goes through your body every time pag pinaperform mo? Kasi this is, the, the, the subject matter. Uh, I am talking about yung The Longest Ride. Um, and I wonder kung uh, both sa written kasi and then sa ano, yung sa pagpa-perform, it's sort of reliving a memory of sorts, di ba? And I'm curious about how you go through with it in terms of uh, how you breathe through your journey in the moment while remembering the past. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, when I when I wrote po kasi, uh, the longest ride, but the softball dilemma, I wrote it when I was a sophomore. That was like two years ago. Oh my god, two years. Ayon, I wrote it two years ago. And uh, usually, of course, the, the thought that comes to mind whenever I'm beginning to start, when I want to uh, create a spoken word piece, is like I said in the creative process, go. What was the last thing that hurt me? Or you know that and. Uh, naturally, po, sa writing process, there are a lot, there were a lot of pauses while I was writing both pieces because I had to uh, look for words, not exactly the right words, but just words to somehow come close to what happened to me and what is happening to me. And uh, sa performance naman po, it's all a rush, actually. Um, before a performance, I get extremely nervous. But once I start speaking, like in front of people, and nagiging uh, malandina ko and all and whatever, it just it's 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 just a rush. And then after, it's just ha, ah, it's done. Parang naman. Because like parang um uh, I think when you perform something that's about something that uh, traumatized you. Uh, when you perform it again and again, uh, parang inisip man na you, yes, I over, I overcame it again. Like nagpasan ko na naman again and again and again, sort of like that. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, um, Jasmine. Um, hello. Yeah. And Sige. um isa dun sa um nag-notes ko kanina ng very light pero parang 
pag pinapanood ko si Ram, ngayon na, first time ko makita yung um, written form ng tula ni Ram. Tapos, parang ang ganda lang tingnan, uh, tsaka ma-realize na yung musicality ng tula niya sa written form, translate niya into body movement to the point na parang, alam mo yun, parang sumasayaw siya on stage na ayon uh, dun sa musicality ng tula niya, which is very, parang para sa akin, na syempre lahat tayo nagpo-perform din. Parang minsan ang hirap i-achieve kasi minsan makukonscious ka sa galaw mo. Tapos siya parang sabay sa flow ng tula, yung galaw ng katawan. So parang ang ganda nun. And then also, dun sa part na um, sa mga tula, lagi akong na-attracted sa imagery na binubuo ng tula. Tapos dito kay Ram, parang um, natrans- nalipat ka niya agad papunta dun sa tula na walang masyadong paligoy-ligoy na bigyan kanya ng magandang pacing and then at the same time nararamdaman mo rin talaga kung ano yung nararamdaman niya within the poem, yung persona ng poem. So yun, parang ang ganda lang anhin na isa sa mga main points ay ng tula ni Ram na pinakagusto ko ay natapakita niya yung imagery na gusto niyang ipakita na very fluent at yun, yun lang po. Okay, salamat. Uh, Jasmine, see si Jaylee. Hi, yes, po. Jail po. Jail. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ram. Um, Hi. So, medyo. Um, so, nabanggit mo kanina na yun nga iba yung process mo when writing for performance and writing for the page. And personally, I relate to that. Na parang uh, may tendency for me also to parang ano ba parang prioritize prose when writing per performance so hindi ko alam kung is that a good intuition or not so parang it's more of a, a question to throw out there lang since hindi ko din alam yung sagot doon and um so siguro uh, yung experience ko with reading both poems sobrang iba doon sa nung napanood kita kasi siguro again connecting it from yung first comment ko. Siguro yung, nung binabasa ko siya, parang, syempre, wala ka as performer. So, ang meron lang ako yung tula. So, for example, isang experience ko doon, inidentify ko agad yung turn doon sa tula. And, ang na-identify ko na turn is, yung, but still the softness. But still the softness, this, affair my body had with gravity kalang to me. So, yun yung akala ko na turn and akala ko yun yung start of healing na mention na din ni Ma'am Banawe na parang um, kung meron bang healing process dito sa tula. And doon sa pagbasa ko, akala ko na sa bandang dulo, meron kang forgiveness dun sa mga nang bully or nag ng trauma sa'yo. And medyo question ko yun na parang dapat niya ba silang patawarin? Parang ganun yung reaction ko. Pe, kaya natuwa ako with the performance. Kasi until the end, ano siya, nakakatakot yung, I mean, nakakatakot in the sense na empowering. Nakakatakot yung persona. Like, um, which is needed, I think. Kasi parang, I don't think na women or queer scare men enough. <laughs> parang dapat. Yeah, exactly. Dapat, so dapat, ma- yeah, parang, uh, yun, nagustuhan ko yun. Yung, so, at first, yung nasabi mo naman na deliberate yung sexiness and ano. So, at first, I didn't know what to make of it. Parang may discomfort. Pero I realize now na going through your poetics and po ano ba yung overall experience, actually okay siya na may discomfort and nakakabother na ganun yung, yung approach mo. Kasi parang naisip ko lang na pwede din siyang politics na hindi naman porket uh, slutty ka magsalita or sexy ka magsalita. Parang it doesn't, parang hindi hindi ka dapat, you don't deserve kung ano man yung how people look at you or parang uh, yung, yun nga, yung trauma na inflicted um, because of yun nga, inherent na structure. So, yun yung mga na-observe ko and yung siguro yung main question ko lang just to keep the conversation, yung um, yung una parang nag-iiba-iba ba yung turns mo when performing kasi parang 
when you performed, I identified many turns. So, nagandahan ako dun sa parang nag-slow down ka dun sa bading. Uh, that word is like a whip. So, sobrang nagandahan ako na na-emphasize yun. And actually, kahit dun sa page, yun yung isa sa mga strongest line, I think, with, with the with the first poem. So, yun yung una kong question. And pangalawa, parang, deliberate ba yung pagiging graphic mo? Or, um, parang, uh, siguro, parang, gust- parang, gusto ko lang to draw inspiration. How, how, paano ka nagiging courageous to, um, ilabas yung mga ganong details, yung pagiging graphic. And, kung nagsiset ka din ba ng limits na hanggang dito lang yung Uh, gusto maikwento, parang gano'n. And then yung last yun nga, ano kaya yung difference ng uh, good spoken word from good poetry sa page? Yun. Thank you po. Uh, can I respond po? Sure, sure. Oh God. Oh, sige. Ano ulit yung, ano, sorry, yung first question mo, ano, at the jail? I want uh, to... Yung parang, if every performance ba, nag-iiba-iba yung Ayan, interpretation. Apo, yeah. I remember, I remember. Um, actually, Uh, my variations, uh, even if it's the same piece, there will be uh, like a different performance. Of course, may mga gestures po that will remain the same. Probably I would keep doing this because I like doing this. Pero uh, in terms of other things, I think makakaroon talaga ng variations because there are some times na I don't feel mentally well Or, uh, ayun nga, there, there's something uh, going on inside my head that could affect the, the performance. And I don't want to lie to myself whenever I perform. So, uh, even if now it sounds empowering, there might be some rare occasions when it's just going to be sad. Um, uh, dun sa ano, actually, it's, it is part of my poetics uh, as an artist, uh, yung pagbibigay ng discomfort, because I like doing that. Actually, when I perform in front of an audience, I really like looking at people straight in the eyes. Because I, I, I gusto ko makita yung um, pagbukas ng confusion sa mata nila and the way they fidget. And uh, add, adding pa yung uh, mga movements ko. I don't know, it's just, uh, I think, amusing to see na I can also have that, that kind of power that's been used against me. for like the the first half of my life you know as as a as a queer kid who didn't know he was queer and didn't really know what, what that meant parang ganun um tapos actually it's one of the reasons yung kung bakit ako magalaw magalaw po ako ng perform it's one of the many reasons kung bakit wala akong decent picture while performing like my friends will know kasi They always take pictures of me and laging nakabunga nga, like nakairap ako, so it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, may tanong po si Ate Hana. Can I answer it? Ng, can I answer it din po? Go ahead, please. Ah, sige. Uh, yung question po niya is, curious lang ako, Ram, kung pwede ba itong lapat ng diaryong bibliographical? Ilang persento? Persento yung danas ni Ram sa tula at ilang persento ni Ram? Um, as I said in my creative uh, process, po, my goal is rarely accuracy. So I guess uh, the incident itself is real, pero uh, there are some parts na katang isip, as, uh, especially, uh, of course, the parts na I wanted to be uh, a sort of uh, how dito? poetic, but it's still real. For me, anyway. Ayan po. Okay, thank you for answering those questions. Um, next, we'll have Kimberly. And then, Ma'am Nerisa. Hello. Uh, first off, Hi. I'd really like to commend Graham for these two moving pieces. Sobrang ganda. Uh, like others have previously said, these two poems can stand on its own in the page. Um, it was beautiful and lyrical. And <clears throat> it really gets the message across. But no pinner form ni Ram, I think na it, he didn't just elevate the poem. Um, he gave it a breath of life and it really came alive and na transform yung poem, kumbaga. Um, so kasi diba sa spoken word, we have different arsenal from page poetry. And 
the breath, the pauses, and enunciation, but the rhythm, I think Ram fully utilized them all. Um, for example, in the soft boy dilemmas, as I was reading the manuscript, the poem, the softness that was depicted in my mind was a subdued version. Yung parang uh, the shy type, the cocooning of oneself. Yun yung kala kong softness na um, nasabi niya. But then when he performed it, he gave it a new, uh, humbaga, nag-add ng confidence dun sa softness, which gives it a nuance to uh, uh, yung dun sa soft boy dilemmas na pinapakita niya. And I really like that kasi it empowered the persona to the poem. And ano siya, um, from start to end, nakikita mo yung ano na yun, uh, softness. And then for the longest ride naman, as I, I was reading that, I was wondering on the title. Kasi yung emphasis was on the movements rather rather than on the ride. And hindi ako nakakita ng temporal aspect. Kasi if you say longest, so naghahanap ako ng length of time, temporal, something temporal dun sa poem. But then when he performed it, dun ko nakita, especially dun sa line na sinabi niya dun sa... Um, about then all the habits went still. I really like that kasi nabigyan ng um, uh, new spin to the line. The pause really emphasized na sobrang tagal nung time na yun for the person. Almost verging on the awkward kasi tumagal na. Pero I think na really that awkwardness really brings more power to the deer and the headlights feeling, yung frozen feeling na wala kang magawa. Um, so all in all, I really commend the performance and the writing. Ang ganda. And thanks for sharing your piece you, and your story. Thank you, Kimberly. Ma'am Narisa. Hi, Ram. And Hi, Mami. Hello, darling. Um, and hello, everybody. Uh, ang ganda ng first uh, workshop opening natin and um, it's so nice to to see how how a spoken word workshop is actually coming along in in a in a virtual setup and during the pandemic so like parang ito yung nangyari uh, binigyan tayo ng manuscript at nakita natin ang tula quote unquote tula na dalawang uh, binigay ni Ram. Pero nung pinerform niya, dun actually natin nakita yung embodiment and talagang yung full na uh, the performance is actually what it is. Right? Di ba parang hindi siya yung teksto? Like yung, yung tula kasi or anything uh, in written literature uh, you can begin and end with that on the page. But for spoken word, it really takes a body, a physicality, you know, the, uh, gestures and a personality to actually bring a performance through. And that is what Ryan Ramali did, right? He, he propelled the performance forward. Uh, and there are just so many things. Nakikita ko, I was listening to him and I was reading uh, the, I, I read the two pieces and nakikita ko yung mga ad-libs ni Ram. And these ad-libs, Ram, how do you, how do you know? Kasi you had written it down. Okay. And parang may feeling ka, tapos nagdagdag ka ng mga particular words, a particular plot. Yeah. Um, why do you do that as a performer? How does it work for you? Um, I think po, whenever, uh, like I said earlier po, na when I perform, it's just a rush. And sometimes, dun sa rush na yun, uh, nagkakaroon ng disarray yung degree of, uh, of the performance. So parang iniisip ko na hindi ko pa na-climb yung peak na gusto ko. So I'm going to add... Uh, these these small words and hope to the gods that it worked. Na, na, you know, na, na, that the ad-libs would work. 
And uh, like I said po earlier then, na talaga pong magkakaroon ng variations. I think it will, lahat po ng performances ko, it will, they will always have different variations whenever I perform it in new settings. And so I guess uh, magkakaroon din po ng uh, slight changes uh, sa mga uh, words and sa gestures, ganun. And this is why I really like to separate um, my writing as uh, a spoken word and sa uh, page poetry. Because the way I see it, uh, when I write spoken word, the written word itself on the doc, it's just a script for me that I can, you know, defy freely. And you know, depending on what I think is right at the moment. I also see, Ram, that depend this uh, mood, maybe the audience, whatever you're feeling, you even change tenses, right? Parang nakikita ko yun. Kasi the manuscript is written in a different tense, pero when you started performing it, you made it more present, more current, or sometimes siguro if you'll perform it, ano, you'll make it nostalgic, so my past tense na ganyan. And these things just, you know, shift, no? So nag-shift lang siya when you want it, right? How can, Apo, you, yeah. how can you tell when you're about to do it? Or is it just something spontaneous you do? Uh, I wish I can say na it's something na, na, na it's something na I really like think about. Like talagang like I, 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 I nudge my head and think ram, 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 think. But also when you're performing, you don't have that and ano eh, that uh, freedom to think po eh. it, it it happens in like in like a second um i think it's spontaneous po i think i remember po this uh, one time i performed uh sa my peta and it was the first time that i really got nervous while performing and in the middle of my performance i forgot the words so i had to i had to i had to improvise like an entire chunk pate I started um, uh, starting from the bottom muna, tapos I cl- I'm climbing my way up. I-, I change the tenses and the verbs. Sometimes I go for pauses, ganon. So I think it, it, it's... Matatawag uh, pa uh, ba itong like muscle memory? I don't know, I'm stupid. Pero I don't know po eh. I think it just... When you do something over and over again, I guess you develop a kind of... Uh, uh, like a consciousness for it. I think. Yeah. I'd like to make just more comments. If, because you were talking about the difference between page poetry and spoken word. Kung page poetry to, your first poem would have ended where it would resonate into a particular silence. Diba? I think yeah. it would have probably ended in. So every time the boys in class or in the neighborhood could, couldn't solve a problem with their fists and they turned to me to test their effectiveness, sun-kissed and pissed at the sight of me, I would collect myself from their trembling palms, kiss their knuckles, and forgive them. Pow. Diba? Yeah. Page Apa, yeah. And, but then to continue it, diba, yung energy pataas, 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 Diba? into sa spoken word until I shattered but I never did. Diba? I, think, I think if I'm going to write it po as page poetry, I, would, I wouldn't include like the last part. You yeah. know, of them poking me until I shattered but I never did. Because I think that belongs on the stage. I think there, there are just some phrases mm-hmm. that you know belong on the page or belong on stage. And I, th- I think you just have to like differentiate. And then, yung isa, in the other poem, you would end if it were page poetry. Maybe if my biology knew what sexual assault was, my dick could have been a dagger. Mm-hmm. Right? Pow. Yeah. And res- Pow. Resonance na lang. You resonate in the silence. You use the white space. Diba? You use that functional space okay. to actually, ano. Pero, sa spoken word, pow. Right? Inaangat mo pa. Right? And it's a good yeah. thing. And thank you for that, Ram. Thank you for... 
Wow! Ang ganda. <laughs> ang ganda, Ma'am Nerisa. Thank you for sharing that. Natututo ako. Hindi ako writer, pero ang ganda. Ang ganda po ng ating mga napapag-usapan dito. Ang next po ay si Earth J. Hi, Ralph. Hi. Um, nagustuhan ko yung tula mo tungkol sa The Longest Ride. Kumbaga, para sa akin, yun nga, sabi nila, napakaganda. Pero yung tumatak talaga sa akin yung soft boy dilemmas. Mm-hmm. Para bang nakikita ko yung sarili ko sa tula mo sa ibang pamamaraan. Yung sabi nila na parang dinala di mo kami sa mundo mo. Um, yun, yun, yun nga, yung question ko na, na paano ka ba magsulat na tungkol sa danas, danas mo patungkol sa diskriminasyon. Gusto ko lang malaman. Ha, like how I write about discrimination, like generally po? Is that the question? Apo, apo. And your experience and how you translate it yes. into poetry. Ah. I think, uh, again, nasunod din sa creative process ko, queerness po will always be like a huge part of my poetics. And uh, kasi ano eh, um, I like confusing people and making them uncomfortable. Uh, if I can do it. Kasi sometimes, for example, if I'm alone, like for example, mag-isa ako, tapos may mga lalaki like in front of me, like group sila, tapos dadaan sila sa akin. I will take the longer route. Like iikot ako, si Ayoko. Or if I can't help it, if I can't help it, like I will put on my best like B face and go like this. And, and that's why a lot of guys, a lot of guys think that uh, galit ako sa kanila, which is probably true because they're men. Shut up, lang. But um, in terms of writing about it, uh, again, depende po eh uh, on my uh, current disposition. But most of the time, whenever I do write about my discrimination, I want, I always want to incorporate it. Um, the malande, you know, that rises uh, from the discrimination and how that malande sort of handles the situation or uh, how it sees it, how I see it, you know, as somebody who is queer. Ayan po. And yeah, I think that's it. I, I don't want, as much as possible, whenever I do write about my discrimination as, as a queer person, I rarely want it to end na ako yung talo where I sound like somebody who loses if that makes sense. And so why ako talaga nagtanong. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. I mean for, I mean like for for the entirety of my life up until now I am under the masculine surveillance. Even though I am overtly flamboyant and feminine at the moment, it doesn't mean na I'm like this everywhere. There are times na sometimes, actually, and I hate it, I unconsciously revert back to my old ways. Like, you boys, gonna like, I'm gonna buy a jeep, gonna buy a SUV. And I don't know why I do it. And, and so, alam niyo, like, why would I give them the opportunity to win at something I have control over? Since I'm the one writing it, I have the opportunity to, you know, finally get back at them. Sort of like that. That's that's the way um, I see it. Ayan. Okay, thank you. Um, Hannah has a question. Uh, marami salamat po. Um, Ram, may tanong ako, Ram. Um, um, nang makita, nung marinig ko na ito yung mga sinusulat mo, ito yung process mo, uh, curious ako kung Nagsulat, uh, sinubukan mo na bang, may naisulat ka na ba na labas sa iyong sarili? Uh, alam natin na talagang ang pagtula ay pagpukurga ng emosyon ng sariling danas. Pero curious lang din ako kung may naisulat ka na ba tungkol sa ibang tao na hindi mo danas o danas ng halimbawa ng ibang tao na malayo sa iyo pero gusto mo siyang isulat dahil gusto mo silang bigyan ng boses. Yung parang ganun. Pero entirely different from your own experience. Yun lang po. Yeah. Um, actually, I... I sort of did something uh, like for for example, uh, that is, I had a, like a mini series called Hormones. It's a spoken word series. That was uh, for example, um, I had a spoken word piece there called uh, Adrenaline. It was basically about uh, the drug war here in the Philippines. And then also I had uh, this 
a piece called Endorphin. And I actually kind of regret that I ever performed it. Because the experience wasn't mine. It was about depression. And uh, I made the made-up character named Tommy. And I made him go through all of these things. Things that I have... I, you know, I have no, like, control over. I have no right over. And I performed it. And I think that's, like, like the only piece that I regret writing about. Because it's not mine. It's, it's, it's not my experience to, like, tell. But, yeah, I've had experiences naman po in writing uh, poems about other people. Ayan. But I guess uh, at the moment, uh, I, I am doing my uh, thesis uh, in creative writing uh, for my senior year. And the uh, tradition ko po kasi is confessional poetry. So I, it's always I, you know, so I have to like make drama all day or something like that. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions for Ram? Before I call on Edbert. Sige, mukhang wala na. Pwede naman nating ituloy ang kwentuhan kahit after ng session na ito. So, um, Edbert? Uh, hi, ayun po. Uh, yung question ko lang po kasi ang naaalala, uh, malayo na dun sa poetry ni Ram. Uh, babalik ako dun sa performance. Kasi po kanina sa pagkakaalala ko po, yung dun po sa lecture, Uh, regarding uh, poetry to pu- puppetry up or balik talaga tayo. Uh, basta yun po. Ang pagkakaalala ko po is yung uh, poetry is uh, like parang gagawin mong movements. Tapos po ang naging parang naisip ko lang, hindi po ba parang dilemma po yun uh, kapag nag-spoken word tayo tapos uh, masyado tayong ma galaw, marami pong movements. Kasi ang naisip ko lang po at some point, kapag minsan po kasi may mga napapanood po ako na uh, masyadong madaming movements, hindi ko na po naiintindihan yung sinasabi niya kasi nagka-clash. Ayun lang po. Uh, would, uh, is that uh, some kind of uh, dilemma po ba talaga? Kasi ganun po yung napapansin ko minsan eh. May ganong instance na nagka-clash yung movements natin tsaka yung sinasabi. Uh, napapansin natin yung movements, uh, pwede tayong madala ng movements, heartfelt siya, uh, pero hindi na natin na uh, iintindihan yung sinasabi or meron naman na iintindihan natin yung sinasabi, pero yung movements, wala naman doon. Parang yun, yun lang po. Uh, okay. Uh, disclaimer lang po, kasi yung pagtatanghal na yun ay hindi naman pang spoken word talaga. Yun ay puppetry performance. So iba talaga yung intention niya. Uh, nagtaka rin nga ako pa- paano kong naimbitahan sa <laughs> workshop na ito. Pero nung tinitingnan ko, dahil nga perform, yung konsepto ng performance o pagtatanghal, parang tinitingnan yung puppetry bilang isang maaring pamamaraan. Pero totoo, hindi, hindi siya pang spoken word. Uh, iniuugnay ko lamang yung uh, awit o yung tula sa pagtatanghal gamit ang puppetry. So I think yun, yun yung sa, sa kaso ng aking uh, lecture. Sana okay. ay nasagot ko yung ano. Opo, yung... nasagot naman po ma'am. Uh, may follow up po ako dun. Kasi po uh, <laughs> kanina po sa performance po. Uh, dun po sa okay, performance yeah. po kanina. Ang napansin ko po at uh, nung may isa kong kachikahan dito na fellow. Uh, ang napansin po namin is hindi namin napansin kagad na wala palang uh, kumakanta doon sa himig kanina ng uh, kanta kanina ng uwi sa duyan. Wala pong, wala, napansin lang namin nung nag-explain ka na po na wala palang kumakanta doon. Uh, kaya ako po na itanong yun na parang nung una akala ko may kumakanta dahil doon sa movements. Ayun po, ayun lang yung napansin ko. Kaya ako rin po natanong yung tanong ko ngayon. Okay. Um, actually, naisip ko rin nung, nung ginagawa ko yung lecture, dapat ko bang i-flash yung text? Pero parang masisira naman yung performance kung, kung lumalabas siya. So siguro may assumption na alam nung manonood yung, yung teksto na uh, ginagawa ng pagtatanghal. 
So yon. So iba yung iba yung perspective ng spoken word. Uh, iba rin yung per- perspective ng nasa dulaan, nasa teatro or nasa um, puppetry. Pero tingin ko, yun nga yung gusto nating um, talakayin at uh, bigyang pansin sa sa workshop na ito. Ano yung mga posibilidad? Uh, meron daw gustong ay sorry. Sige po. Uh, but I think po na ano eh, uh, it all interconnects. I think that spoken word borrows a lot of things from other disciplines like page poetry and theater and I think even puppetry to a degree especially if um, uh, movements in tinitignan natin. Kasi it really is uh, an, an interdisciplinary uh, thing. You know, kaya minsan mahirap i like itan siya kung like is it like uh literature or is it yeah. theater parang ganun mm-hmm. uh, yeah oh thank you uh si Steve may gusto yatang i-share hello can i be heard yan medyo lakasan pa ng konti sige alam mo Ah, uh, medyo interested talaga ang ano, ang <laughs> Ako ay isang dramaturg, you know? So, clear ba ako? Apa. Okay. That's why this is uh, given me a lot of uh of validation of what I I want to ano, no? Lahat ng ginagawa kasi natin performance is very fact even the very intention that we have right now that you're sitting there we are performing actually the only time perhaps that we are not performing is when we are sleeping no? but again <laughs> still performance it can be very contentious because we are dreaming you know? <laughs> okay um it's, it's not being it's not uh being uh effective the way i see it i'm simply validating you know, because when one reads for example the poem of ram the performance happens in our minds in other words the meanings come from our own experiences right in other words my experience from my context from my milieu from my uh, dealings with the lgbt plus will be the meanings that will come to me and the responses that i will have however when raya now ram starts uh speaking his own thing the full means change they become a lot clearer they we see we see we see ryan in the flesh uh talking about his experiences and gives to us a different kind of meaning perhaps a clearer meaning of what it intends to be because sa kanya, it's not only about text eh. sa kanya yung actions gestures breaks moments etc it's his life now so so it becomes even more effective from the point of view right now how what what happens now if that same text is read or spoken by another person another uh, yeah is that a question for right? yes yes um i think it will depend uh for if if that person for example uh they will read a uh, soft boy dilemmas if it's going to be like a masculine man yes yeah, uh, uh it would be kind of awkward and the word softness paired with uh, the the imagery and the experience that uh, I wrote on that on that piece it won't have much weight Correct. it's going to be just it's going to be just words full and that's it words out of the mouth that's what i mean not the meaning change okay now that is only now let, let me put it in a different situation again we change now the context of the audience what if you put it into a different audience let's say you will now perform this in hyderabad or in a Zen Buddhist community, you see? Because when a poet or when a writer writes intent, and the intent is made clearer by the words, by the gestures, and you have your audience in your mind once you write, whether it's a play, whether it's poetry. That's why it becomes a lot clearer because Ryan is the one speaking out what he feels. However, if Ryan is the one who speaks it out to a different audience, not us because we are the gospel audience let's say ryan all of a sudden speaks in front of a highly islamic Tausug community uh-huh. the meanings now will be different you see what i'm saying 
Yeah, I know. Opo, yeah. I, am, I am validating the whole performance environment. So a lot of things get together to make a performance uh, effective. And this includes all kinds of actions, actions that have been intent. And this is what we call performance. Thank you, Ryan, for this beautiful, huh? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you, Sir Steve. Yes, Ram. Uh, may tanong po si Ma'am G. Ah, uh, ito, uh, phone-in question. If the spoken word will be published, how would you express the spaces in the work? Will you keep the text as it is or rewrite it? Would you even publish it? Kasi pwede naman hindi. Yeah. Ano po eh. Um, I, I mean... I Clearly, naman po, I have the like option whether or not I want the piece to be published. Um, siguro po, if given the opportunity, I would rewrite it. And siguro, lang kasi, label like spoken word. Tapos, ang plano ko, I'm going to rewrite it as page poetry. So, like, walang sense. Um, I Create would, your own label. <laughs> yeah. I think I would publish it po as it is. And and then, uh, yeah, pu publish it as it is. And then, siguro, my notes sa dulo na, please watch this video. <laughs> 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 like, for, like, the intended, for, like, the intended effect. <laughs> Um, I mean, I mean, I have the opportunity naman po to like rewrite it and make it like fit the page. Pero like, it would defeat the purpose of it being spoken word since I'm tailoring it to like fit like the genre, like page poetry. But I guess, opo, yeah, I would publish it as it is. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ram. Uh, Sir Vim, go. Hindi ko alam kung kasali ako dahil wala ano naman ako. Hindi ako panelist pero <laughs> nagkikikil ako. Parang gusto ko talaga magsalita. Pasensya na Ram ha. Pagbati. Kasi parang pumapasok sa talakayan na para saan ba yung salita? Halimbawa nakikita ko. Uh, may danas ka. Gusto mo sabihin yung karanasan mo. Dapat ba yung tumigil sa pahina? Dahil Nakikita natin yung tirania o tirani ng pahina. Kaya gusto mong bigkasin na lang. Pero merong tirani rin sa pagtatanghal. Di ba? Yung espasyo. At ngayon sa sa sa, sa Zoom, nakikita kita nasa loob din ng kahon na ba nagtatanghal kanina. At ngayon sabi nga kanina ni kinokorek niya si Jaylee, si jail mirror di ba parang you're a mill in you're in jail para kang nakikita kita na nakakulong din eh di ba na, na gumagalo na pilit kang kumakawala dahil dito rin sa mga mga ganitong pangyayari so parang nakikita ko tuloy na pilit nating ibinabalik yung panahon na hindi pa naimbento ang papel nang lahat ng mga naroob sa loobin natin Ipinapalabas lang natin. Eh kaso inaimbento ni Gutenberg yung papel eh. Pesting Gutenberg yan eh. Kaya kita nyo, di ba, pumapaloob tayo sa imprenta. No? Kaya gusto natin lahat ng ating alaala, isinisiksik natin sa pahina. Ngayon, pinipilit natin ikaw, ilabas ngayon no? ang ating alaala, madiliman o maliwanag, na itala o i-record no sa sa pamamagitan ng pagpatatanghal natin no ibig bang sabihin yung, tu, yung tuloy yung tanong ko yung salitang ganap yung ating pagganap no pag pagperform eh yun din ang ganap no yung kaganapan o fulfillment ng salita no doon ba siya matatahimik kapag yung sa loob mo inilalabas kaya express no press out inilalabas mo yung nasa loob mo Ang unang reaksyon mo isulat eh, di ba? Kasi nga para maalala mo. Kaya lang sabi nga ni Nietzsche, di ba? I don't believe in God, but I still believe in grammar. Sadly, I believe in grammar kasi may mga batas na naman tong grammar eh, grammar, spelling, punctuation. May mga batas din kaya sinisikil ka rin ng mga ito eh, no? So, naisip ko siguro yung tanong para sa lahat na rin, no? Sa ba tong natatapos itong yung pagganap, no? Yung sa natatapos tong Uh, talambuhay ng salita no kapag may gusto kang sabihin sa may to natatapos no 
sa pagladathala, sa pagtatanghal. At yung kagaya na ginagawa mo, yung variation na theme, no? habang tinatanghal mo, pinapalitan mo kasi ano ba talaga ang otentiko? Di ba? Yung nakasulat na, pahinga na, RIP. O yung nakapagtanghal na habang tinatanghal mo, dahil na, sabi mo, nalilimutan mo minsan yung salita, yun ba? Baka yun, baka yun yung tama. No? So, anong kaganapan ng alaala? Anong kaganapan ng karanasan? No? Doon ba natatapos? Saan natatapos? At kailan ito matatapos? No? Sabi nga nila, poetry is not... Uh, uh, anyway, mamaya na lang. Pa, ikaw, ikaw ra ang gusto ko marinig na. Pasesa na. Ah, Ayoko sana sumali, kaya lang nakakagigil ka eh. <laughs> I don't think po, uh, to answer your question, I don't think it ever really ends. Yung ganap na nangyayari. I think even uh, our old pieces, we can keep, we can continue editing them. And magkakaroon sila ng mga bagong ganap. And other experiences that are, uh, you know, that we can juxtapose with them. So I think hindi naman po talaga siya natatapos. Oh, oh, sir, Vin. Rin, no? <laughs> Sorry. Sige, sige, ikaw muna. Hindi ko alam, nalimuto ko na nagsabi, no, no poems finish, just set aside, no? Walang tula na tapos. Lahat eh, kumbaga isinasantabi lamang. Yun lang po, salamat din Ami sa pagkakataon. At pagpati, Ram. Thank you po. Uh, padagdag lang po. Actually, um, I have uh, this uh, kind of friend, uh, si Kuya Har- uh, Carlo Hernilia po. Uh, I remember no, nung nasa CCP kami, uh, sinabi niya sa akin na lagi niyang ine-edit yung mga piyasa niya. Uh, for uh, like hindi, lagi hindi siya tapos. So yung, yung ipaperform niya po na piyasa today, it will be quite kind of different if he performs it like after a few months. Kasi i-edit. Um, ah, y- y- Ma'am din sasali pa po na gusto ko ipasok pala yung poetry as therapy. No, kasi kape-perform mo, di ba? A- ako mi- na- na- namatayin ako ng anak eh. Kaya, kaya pag sinasabi ko na inuuna ko agad, namatayin ako ng anak. Sa pagsasabi nun, para naghihilom mm. yung sakit. Mm. Yung makauulit mo, yung pinangungunahan mo kami sa gamit mo tala, nakakatulong ba yun para maghilom yung sugat na dinanas mo sa diskriminasyon? Yung kaulit, no? yung papel ng repetition sa paghilom. I, I can answer po. Oo, oh, para sure. sa iyo. Uh, I feel like opo. I mean, as- aside from uh, of course the validation that I get from my peers, Uh, one of the reasons why I am writing is so I can make uh, emotions more specific, and so I, I I'll, I'll be able to like understand them and pick them apart. You know. Okay. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Vim. Hindi natatapos ang pagsusulat at pagtatanghal. Kaya lang yung session natin matatapos na. <laughs> So, kaya okay, tinanong kita din. Salamat, ha? Hindi, <laughs> okay lang. Okay lang yun. Siyempre, bahagi yun eh. Dahil, ano eh, kayo nga ang bumuo nito. Hindi ko nga alam ba't ako napasama eh. Siyempre, so, kailangan kompa. masagot mo yun. <laughs> yun yung, yung pagpili namin, may posibilidad. Kasi ang dami posibilidad eh. Mm-mm-mm. Tapos, ang ganda nga, kasi nga, meron ka ng written text Mm-mm. at itinatanghal mo pa ito. Diba? So, na ikaw yung sumulat, kaya kagaya na nabanggit ni Ram, pag may nakalimutan ka, kaya mong gumawa ng ibang teksto. Dahil alam mo eh kung anong gusto mong um, sabihin. Tapos nga yung binabanggit nyo na yung nag-iiba, yung sinasabi, yung galaw, depende sa kung sino ang nanonood, ano ang nararamdaman mo. So, napilkadaming elementong ang nagiging bahagi nung pagtatanghal na maaring nagpapaganda don sa sa proseso mo bilang uh, manlilikha, manunulat, uh, tagapagtanghal. Uh, siguro kung sa akin, uh, hashtag hugot. So yung tula ni Ram, may hashtag hugot. Pero ang pa-hashtag ko kay Ram ay palaban. ba diba? Talagang, oo, oh, oh, yung kanyang tula ay lumalaban pati yung kanyang pagtatanghal. Pero sana dumating din yung punto na hindi, bagamat nararamdaman mong mahina ka, pero actually yun yung kalakasan mo. 
So parang magandang mas ipahayag mo pa yung kalakasan mo sa mga tao. Okay, sige po. Kung wala na tayo pang ibang... Uh, ah, huling mensahe pala mula sa ating naunang fellow na si Ram bago magtapos ang ating programa. Ay, okay po. Uh, first of all po, I would like to thank uh, everybody uh, who made this possible. Uh, thank you po, uh, panelists and my co-fellows uh, for taking the time uh, to critique my work and understand uh, where I'm coming from. And really, I feel so humbled to be here, uh, especially uh, since it's spoken word. And spoken word really did change the way I see things when I started when I was like, 18, I think, or 17. And I'm happy uh, na it continues to create uh, safe spaces for everybody, for anybody uh, who desperately needs it. Um, I would like to uh, take this opportunity uh, to say na if there's anybody uh, watching uh, who has experienced any uh, form of uh, abuse or harassment uh, that a person's bad intention doesn't mean that there was a failure in your part to prepare or understand. It was never and will never be your fault. And I hope you don't spend the rest of your life trying to convince yourself otherwise. Ayan, uh, thank you Paul, uh, for everything uh, for today and for the coming days. I'm really, really, really grateful to be here. Thank you, Paul. Picture, picture. Congrats, Ram. Thank you. Pagbati sa ating workshop fellow, sa mga panelista at sa lahat ng sumama sa unang araw ng Amelia La Peña Bonifacio Writers Workshop. Abangan ang mga kasunod na session ng ating palihan at huwag ding kalimutang i-like at i-share ang aming mga social media page. Matutunghayan niyo po sa inyong screen ang schedule para bukas. Muli, maraming salamat. Congratulations sa first session. At magkita-kita tayo bukas. Hindi kita pababayaan. Maging Ano man ang iyong pasyan